Welcome to the Miscellaneous Podcast. This is Season 3, Episode 8. My name is Adil Amar, and I have Misophonia. Today, my conversation is with yet another Londoner, Claire. This is at least the third Londoner I've had on the show, leading me to believe that there is some sort of misophonia epidemic in the UK. Whatever it is, this is yet another great chat, and I hope a great community can form and grow over there to bring misophones together. Claire is actually, in fact, on a mission, as she says, to find more misophones and spread the word. We talk about that, synesthesia, how miso has affected her family, which is, as you know, a common theme on this podcast, and living in a world designed for neurotypicals. Hey, speaking of community, I started an experiment this week by creating a group chat on Instagram, and it's quickly turned into a lively place for connecting and discussing all things miso. If you're interested in joining, just hit me up at Misophonia Podcast on Instagram, and I'll add you. You don't have to worry about participating all the time. You can just follow the conversation, and you can you know you can adjust your notifications so your phone doesn't ding all the time. It's a great place to hang, especially if you happen to be somewhere where you're being triggered. All right, now let's get right to my conversation with Claire. Welcome, Claire. Welcome to the show. Good to have Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So yeah, we were just saying how uh, there's a bit of a time difference between us. Do you want to you want to tell people where you where you are basically? I'm in sunny London. <laughs> London, okay, yeah, yeah. It's not sunny okay. at the moment. It's pitch black. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's dark, dark here too. Um, yeah, I've had a, I've had a few people from London, uh, London this year, and this uh, somebody from Ireland uh, actually yesterday, a couple of days ago. So uh, yeah, a lot of people in the UK area. Um, so, yeah, this is yeah, quite t- London's London's the misophonia seems to be quite London centric at the moment. Well, the people I've talked to, they've all said that they don't know anybody who's got it. I mean, maybe I should start there. Like, uh, do you know other? Do you have a bit of a little miso group over there in London? I'm on a mission to find my miso group, oh. and actually, this is a first for me because this is the first time ever in 24 hours I've spoken to two people with misophonia. So I had a conversation with with another um, woman last night who's also in London. Um, so, yeah, I feel like this is exciting. <laughs> it's the so one this... thing that makes me feel like I'm not going crazy. <laughs> yeah. Did you, so did you say it's this, this, these 24 hours was the first time you ever talked to anybody about misophonia or it just happens to be two people in 24 hours? Two people in 24 hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and did that person have miso as well? Yes, they do. Okay. Okay. How did you How did you uh, bump into them then? Um. He. She's the friend of my boyfriend's. Gotcha. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. And how did that How did that come up? Did uh, Did you see her just totally freak out at a trigger, and you're like, "Whoa, come here." No, I mean, I've not. <laughs> we, we, we just had a virtual call. Um, oh, gotcha. In these in these funny times, so yeah, we actually met face to face, but um you know where i've been sort of on a mission to understand it more he's sort of been you know talking about it um and you know she sort of mentioned and to him that she might have it and he's like oh yeah. you know that has that yeah. um so that's how it came about um and where i have been sort of being a bit more vocal about it um that's i've great. also met you know there was a colleague and and then a person I went to school with who I've known for like 20 years also has it so yeah like the more I've been speaking about it the more people are like oh I have it too <laughs> okay yeah so you yeah you've really been uh, kind of spreading the word or or just kind of finding people that's great yeah um and uh so how long so how long have you known that you've had it um I mean even probably before you had it before I had a name actually I've missed a very important person who also has it which is my brother so actually, I've spoken uh, to three people in the last 24 hours. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Um, so how long have I had it? Um, my first memory of being annoyed by noise was when I was about six or seven. Um, I used to share a bedroom with my brother. You can imagine all those kind of like sleeping noises that sort of, you know, can drive oh, yeah. you crazy. <laughs> I create I create them too. So is it is the same brother you were sharing a room with that, that yeah. has me so funny as well? I just have one sibling, one brother, and we okay. both have it, yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so, you know, he'd be sleeping away. He's the younger brother. Um, and I'd sort of wake up in the middle of the night just full of rage and, you know, wake him up in really mean ways to make the noises stop. Um, so I'd like to issue a public apology to him <laughs> yeah, for any yeah. trauma I might have caused. This is a som- somber and, and humbling moment. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, that's okay. that's interesting. And and did he um, did he exhibit symptoms of miso at the time too, or did his come a little later? Because he, I mean, he's a little younger, so I'm maybe, maybe yeah. His so. actually came late, um, and you know, his first sounds, as far as I'm aware, were around the dinner table, and he used to accuse me of saying like, you know, that sound thing, you know, because they were, first of all it was like sleeping noises, and then for me it was the dinner table sounds, and he used to say to me. Claire, you're the one who made me hate eating sounds. It's your fault. Um, okay, yeah, I was going to ask if... It. Yeah, okay, so I was going to ask... Right, I was going to ask if uh, there was any of that kind of dynamic where, he, you know, there was some suspicion that, that it kind of, like, spread through you pointing it out so much. Because, um, you know, there's always this debate, is this, like, hereditary or... is I mean, is this, uh, like, are you born with it? Do you acquire it? So... Um, so I guess he seemed to think that uh, he acquired it from you. Yeah, like I awoke the misophonia within him. Yeah. Um. Interesting. And uh, and and so how did uh, and so your your first tri- your first triggers with your, were your brother? Did it start to expand then? To it sounds like it started to expand to the dinner table and kind of other family sounds. Oh yes, it has expanded. <laughs> Those okay, were the good okay. old days where it was just one thing, and then it was. Um, yeah, the dinner table sounds. Um, I remember actually, it's funny with dinner table sounds. I remember having this childminder when I was young and she always used to say like, children should be seen, not heard at the dinner table. And she always made some, make, used to make this really clear point about this. Like a and Mary Poppins be, kind of, yeah. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> and she'd be, you know, they'd have this group of kids all around the dinner table munching away in her house and after school. And she'd just obviously, and I was like, oh, maybe she has misophonia. And I think, or maybe she awoke the sort of eating sound misophonia within mm. me. Um, but then it was also, uh, so it was eating. And then it was my brother eating first of all. And then it was my dad. And then it was... Yeah sounds through walls like muffled like the radio in the bathroom right. being in my bedroom and then the tv and then it was yeah and then it's just kind of grown from there and even like yeah, the miso kinesio which i mean i didn't even know that was a thing is that even how no. you say it <laughs> and i was like uh, oh, it's, that yeah, has a name kin- kinesia yeah right yeah i didn't know about it until uh, probably, it's probably been like a year only yeah yeah, same. And I thought, oh, God, that's so mean that there's a movement one as well. <laughs> right. Yeah, movement, visual. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of really attacks the senses. Um, so, yeah, so it started to spread everywhere. Like, yeah, I mean, like a, lo- like a lot of people. Um, how did it start to affect, like, school and friends? You know what? I, f- I feel like I've got really lucky in that I don't have any memories of being triggered at school. So yeah. I think I don't know how I've got out of that one. Um, you know, I know I, mean, I don't have that many either. So um, that's yeah, that's kind of lucky for us. <laughs> I've listened to people on this podcast who obviously you know they're studying at the moment and they're having a really tough time with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, the only time I can really recall is when I was at university and everyone started like getting those white chunky MacBooks and sort of bringing them to lectures and the sort of typing. You oh, know. Oh, gotcha. Yep feeling a bit awkward but you know I was just it wasn't really a thing um so but for me it was more like triggers at home like um when I was a teenager it was that sort of you know with my dad it would just sort of get worse and worse like everything he seemed to do would trigger me and it's been interesting yeah. listening to his podcast and realizing that for a lot of other people it's also the noises their dads make absolutely absolutely yours truly too and and how about your mom in this situation um my mum not so much i mean she does do things you know like eating sounds sometimes maybe certain like intonation of the way she says things but actually um yeah not not so much but 
you know it's mostly my dad which is such a shame and I do sometimes wonder like what it would be like you know how our relationship would be if we could sort of like remove the misophonia like, how oh, it's absolutely. impacted things yeah I mean a lot of us think about that that's where that uh, kind of the shame and the guilt kind of comes mm. in thinking about thinking about all that all that stuff and I'm sure we have you know we have memories of seeing our parents parents reactions that uh, it's not pleasant for them um, to kind of think about you know not and them not understanding at least we kind of understand what's going on it's kind of tough for other people um i was thinking about this yesterday with the the shame the guilt and dealing with the reactions from people because you know whenever i speak about it or you know especially to them it's you know people it feels like a personal attack it's like their ego sort of comes back and is like oh you know well just ignore it or like you know i can't help it and it's like you know you can't well it's just um yeah you're not the one who has to live with me <laughs> right 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 yeah yeah i get um, yeah it's uh yeah i guess from the other point of view it's uh, well when you when you're in the middle of a trigger it's like hard to think rationally i mean mm. you don't really want to think rationally it's just like uh, you don't even know what rational is. It's just like it just feels like you're being attacked, like something is going to hurt you. Um, and so, it, when you choose, if you choose that point to kind of like start to think of words, then yeah, I guess it could it, <laughs> it could definitely come off wrong to the other person who's not really hearing anything. It's um, true. And even um, I was in in the conversation I was having last night, um, was sort of talking about this and how it is actually quite hard to comprehend how another person might be feeling like even someone with me Sophonia, like where I've had conversations with people and different things like they have different triggers to me and right. so I think oh wow I don't understand how that can like I understand how that feels but I can't understand being triggered by that sound it doesn't bother me yeah, um, and yeah then there's been some Sorry, glimmers of where you don't feel like wow I, I don't know how that person feels even though they have the same even though we have the same experience but we you know it's in relation to different things right and so how did you um what were some of the ways that you kind of acted out uh, you know as you were growing up obviously not understanding what it was not definitely not it not having a name um were, were you just kind of leaving situations where you kind of you know i don't know throwing things or um how how, well, did, how did it go obviously with the with the, with the early days with my brother i'd sort of try right and your brother was tortured yeah. Stop the noise <laughs> in the middle of the night. Um, and I remember sort of a lot of screaming, you know, turn the noise down or turn that off. And, or, you know, being like, oh, can you just eat differently? You know, I'd be quite vocal about it. And then that would end yeah. in altercation. Um, yeah. But where I've begun to understand it more, I've obviously got earplugs and earphones and it's funny because even before I knew what misophonia was like I'd found all these coping strategies that actually everyone else has yeah. discovered too and I was like oh we're really smart people like you know we don't have any kind of medical <laughs> guidance we don't have any like no it's such a mysterious strange thing and we've all figured out ways to cope and they're all yeah. really like similar. And I was like, oh, that's really smart. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hell yeah, we are. We mentioned it on podcasts. I mean, we tend to be smart people. So um, what did you think it was? Like, did you just think that uh, this person was, did you just think that the world was full of people who were um, like just gross? Or yeah, I, mean, I think that or, I think yeah. that all the time. I just think people are noisy. I sort yeah. of worry, I was like, no, I need to learn to love everybody. <laughs> I mean, I'm a yoga teacher right. as well, so I like try and use my practice to be like, love everyone, but when you're sort yeah. of on the tube or, you know, moving through life and there's just like noise everywhere and everyone just feels so noisy, it's quite hard sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it feels like everyone has no self-awareness and they're just yeah. kind of extremely selfish. Um, and then when, when did you, um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, you 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 thought and you still think like we all think everyone's just gross when did you uh how, how, when did you find out that it was a real thing with the name so it was actually my brother who um discovered yeah i think it was like you know, six or seven years ago and he was like ah, that thing um it's called yeah. misophonia it's got a name i was like what 
you know, instantly went onto Google and then found yeah. those like clickbaity articles that you often refer right. to, like hatred of sound and things like that. And I was like, I mean, at the time, I was just like, wow, this is incredible. Like, it has a name, um, but it's uh, it's still it's still quite mysterious. Like, despite there's you know lots of people writing papers and doing science about it and things coming out it still feels like a mystery and really hard to explain to people yeah it's still uh, um yeah i struggle to kind of i think everyone struggles to kind of explain exactly what's going on um we know that it's a it's not just a psychological thing because the yeah the sort of in the beginning it felt like it was a psychological thing that was sort of like the first yeah research I did I was like oh this is psychological and blah blah blah. and then yeah this new kind of about about two years ago I sort of or a year ago I I don't die word I went really into researching um Mm -hmm. because I just thought this is affecting me so much now it's like stopping me from doing my job um and I need to educate myself on this and just own it because if this is going to affect me for the rest of my life and it's holding me back and I just can't have that yeah. and then I found so many more things that it you know it is actually how your brain is wired um I just thought wow <laughs> it's not my fault you know it's just like you're no. just born that way um and it is and the, the kind of the things that came out for me were that it's genetic and that you know Christopher and I have it and also it's linked to synesthesia which my brother and I both have too um uh, when I explain that that is um uh it's uh, like a, it's um there's lots of different types of synesthesia and some pa- some some sort of research even says that misophonia is like a type of synesthesia uh-huh. I mean. but um it's the one that the type that my brother and I have is where we see all of our numbers and letters in colors gotcha okay yes that's what that was right yeah you're not you're not the first people um one of the Johns <laughs> was on the podcast um, from, I think it was late last year also, also was talking about how he sees colors in uh, numbers and words and music. Um, yes. Yeah, interesting. Okay. So, and um, oh, yeah, go on, yeah, tell me, yeah, oh, tell, no, just no, tell no, me no, more no. about some of the stuff that you're, that you're reading about um, or so researching. I was, yeah, went really into, into that and, um, was thinking you know sort of trying to reframe the way that I felt about it like there's this sense that you don't like you're sort of going through the world and it just nothing it feels really overwhelming all the time and the misophonia it me it makes it means that you're particularly sensitive it's like you your senses are always like super heightened right. and maybe it's not that you know you're you're in the wrong feeling so sensitive it's just the world hasn't been designed for sensitive people um and i just thought you know the only you know work i'd sort of sit there and be so triggered by all of the noises in the office and think you know this office was never designed with like sensitivities in mind or sound like it affects people so differently and you know all of our spaces have never been it's never been considered like how everyone is unique in the way they work and the way that they you know the environment they need to thrive and you're just sort of shoved into this kind of like one size fits all way of working and doing things in life and if it doesn't work for you if you're not neurotypical which is another new word that I've I've Mm -hmm. learned um Mm -hmm. you know you kind of suffer and you sort of was looking around and everyone could kind of focus and get on with their work and I just felt like my brain was on fire yeah (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in tech. So, like, I went, I've gone through years of the the whole open office movement. The uh, worst. Yeah, um, and I remember my my actually my elementary school, which was built in the um, early '70s, back you know post hippie era, and it was a kind of an open office building. Uh, sorry, open open environment building, which uh, I didn't have. You know, luckily I didn't have meso at that time, or I didn't notice it. But uh, there was definitely a trend for a while where openness was. Um, you know, touted as great, and I, I wouldn't want to be in a open elementary school <laughs> right now. But uh, yeah. it's—I uh, think now, though, the or just overall, the um, 
uh, oh well, at least before COVID, uh, the trend was going back towards more um, diverse workspaces where there are maybe some open office and uh, some open spaces, some you know, um, you know um, kind of um, you know quick meeting rooms. Um, you know, just different pl different ways to work. I, I think that's starting to be a trend where, where uh, designers are getting more creative with uh, with spaces. I'm hoping that that uh, continues. Well, tell me about kind of where where you're working. You said you're, I think you're a teacher. Um, no, I work in publishing. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, I misheard that. Um, so I sell books basically, market books. Um, and it's interesting I work with a lot of books on like resilience and things like that and I always sort of look at them and I think oh you know if you want to meet someone resilient you should meet someone with misophonia mm -hmm. <laughs> you know I, I keep I keep seeing like you know autism has is, is got a lot of awareness and you see a lot of uh concerts and um especially especially geared towards events that are geared towards children but also like uh, I've seen grocery stores here have like sensory um uh, sensory um, basically hours that are um, uh, specific hours of the week that are for people with sensory uh, sensitivities where they make things quieter they turn the lights down a little bit um, and I'm just, I'm just wondering I'm hoping that uh, yeah, you know more organizations are starting to be more sensitive to people like us who are a little bit more neurodiverse not just autism but you know misphonia have you okay. seen anything like that in uh in uh in london like any kind of um um accommodations what you know for um for people with uh we uh no i was gonna say weird but uh for people with uh um you know who are not neurotypical as you say you know i've I, when you were just saying about the supermarket thing i was like wow that's amazing mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's so good yeah. um yeah. I'm thinking of maybe on the website having uh, I, I want to kind of like showcase the, like organizations that do this. So I might start to I might create like a list of these places. Um, yes, please. Anyways, I just think it's yeah. just interesting to see what people are doing, because I honestly can't think of a single thing here in the UK. I mean, maybe yeah, I one person I, it, but right. yeah, I can't think of anything. Yeah. Yeah. Different countries have just different different levels of uh, awareness. And then uh, after the awareness, there are there's like what's what's the actual care level <laughs> and then what what will the people actually do um, i mean i'm at the i'm in the kind of place where i feel like the only person who is going to like speak up for me or make a difference is myself like and that's kind of where i was with work and just thought you know this is affecting my performance this is not healthy for me like this is causing me so much stress on a daily basis being in this environment and no one's going to sit there and be like oh Claire can I help you or like you know right. should I talk to someone for you I was like the only person who's going to do that for myself is me so I sort of like did loads of research made a bit of a case and um you know got the outcome that I needed because you know the company I work for is really compassionate and they're kind of set up to to do that but I know that you know now I've done that once like you know in the future if I sort of find myself in that position again, I would feel more confident about just being like, look, I've got this thing called misophonia and um, I need some equipment or, you know, I need to sit somewhere special or be somewhere different so I can actually do my job. And this is just, this is just my little suitcase of baggage that I come with. So <laughs> like it or lump it really. Do you want to share a little bit of like how you went about that? Cause I'm sure some people are like, uh, you know, uh, at an abstract level, they're probably like, "Ah, oh, well, yeah, I want to. I, I feel like I should do something like that." But how did you? Uh, did you just research over like you know one night? Uh, did you you know or spend a few days put put something together, call a meeting? Like, how did you go about doing that? Well, I sort of started researching just almost to like affirm the fact that misophonia was definitely hundred percent real, and you know, get really up to speed on what was happening. Um, so I, I don't know how long I spent researching, maybe just like a couple of weeks. Um, yeah. And then sort of that built up and helped me build up enough courage to um, go to the HR team um, and just have a conversation, um, you know. Okay, so you didn't, you didn't tell your boss necessarily, you just kind of went, you, you, went to, you went to the company's HR. Yeah, well, I, you know, I was, I was going to tell my boss, but I just wanted to like, 
speak to someone, you know, neutral, yeah. see what could be could be done. And then I had a conversation with my boss, who's, you know, lovely and really understanding. Um, and then I had a uh, an appointment with a kind of occupational health person. Um, Did they set that up? Yeah, they set that up for okay. me. And, you know, I wasn't expecting him to sort of like know what misophonia was, but he was very understanding and you know listened um and he kind of wrote some recommendations sort of you know based on what i said that was then communicated back to the company um and then so the recommendations like uh here's a glass box that claire needs to be in at all times <laughs> yeah <laughs> soundproof <laughs> glass box <laughs> i wish um yeah. no and then uh, and then he recommended I go and see my GP, and that was really scary. I don't know why. Oh, wow. I yeah. thought, what do I, do? I sort of plucked the courage up to make an appointment and, and went along and sort of was like, oh, I think I have this thing. In fact, I know I have this thing. Um, and you know, I wasn't, I wouldn't know what to expect. I was kind of the, the best case scenario has been, oh, yeah, she would have said, I know, I, I totally know what that is. and yes we can i can sort of refer you maybe to an audiologist we can you know i don't know what i was hoping for but anyway she just recommended that i take like anti-depression anti-anxiety medication which you know i've been offered many many times so i'm just like <laughs> no this is not the solution right 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 <laughs> so um i left that appointment feeling pretty like kind of hopeless not hopeless like just a bit like oh for goodness sake like you know, yeah. you know a medical part like a doctor's just like doesn't even get it like you know that just proves the point that you know you just have to manage it yourself and sometimes you do feel really alone with it you just think this is just you know everyone else is just sort of getting on with things I mean, everyone has their stuff like you know i don't know what everyone else is going through as well like everyone has their things but you know misophonia really does you know dictate a lot of my life <laughs> yeah. i try not to let it but you know it will a tube journey for me where i'm surrounded by triggers is going to be very different for someone who doesn't have mesophonia right yep the tube and subway um and what you just, that all you can do is really just uh close your eyes and put on some earphones headphones basically yeah yeah have my little techniques i'll turn my body away from whatever it is it's always yeah. it's quite a lot of mesokinesia on the tube with like the gum chewing though now people have to wear masks don't see that anymore right right yes that should uh should probably be permanent for some people <laughs> yeah I, I agree with that. <laughs> um but obviously since covid um, we've been working from home so um you know that was such a how's that working out yeah in the beginning it's sort of like a double-edged sword really because in the beginning i was like oh my gosh like you know this is so wonderful like i don't have to worry about being triggered at work anymore um even though the kind of the the adjustments really like just helped so much like it just made it it's like nine day it just made it manageable um and but yeah, working from home, it was just such a relief in the beginning. But I am really missing the human connection, even though yeah, uh, I don't like being in an office. Um, but I still find you miss a human connection, home. even though you don't like to be around certain humans when they're yeah. doing certain human yeah, things. It's, it's yeah. like you can't win. <laughs> um, but I, I, yeah, there's still triggers at home because um, obviously I'm living with my uh, parents at the moment. Um, uh so you know hearing my dad on the phone upstairs mm -hmm. while working the, from home things like that right right um but i mean I, I, yeah and, and again like on the tube i guess is is your tool or um is your tool to kind of just put on some headphones or do you yeah, i don't know uh, take your laptop outside or something i have different headphones for different occasions so um you know the sound cancelling ones are sort of the uh the ones when i'm feeling really triggered yeah. and then i have my normal like iphone ones where you know i just want and it's just kind of normal and then it's more cash yeah it's, it's more, more cash, cash. <laughs> and then i have these incredible 
because uh, sometimes actually it's a bit much having music going on and you just want some peace and quiet so i have these incredible earplugs that i get from like a uk pharmacy called boots they're these like little wax oh, earplugs yeah. and they just it's like turning your ears off they're so good and they're really cheap as well so i stock up on like 10 boxes of them at a time and is this um, like the stock boots uh earplugs or is this yeah, some they're just special like, brand no, they're just like own brand. They're called Muffles Wax Earplugs, if anyone's okay. interested. And um, they're just my favorite earplugs ever. And you put them in and the whole world sort of goes quiet. Yeah. It's so nice. Yeah. Um, and then I have a speaker, like a Bluetooth speaker, if I want some sort of background noise. Um, so yeah, I have lots of different things that I do. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. So yeah, if you don't want to necessarily have the music right in your ears, I never thought about the... Uh, earplugs combo combo with um some speakers just playing some background music as uh or even white noise or something that would be an interesting combination if you don't really care about Sometimes what you're listening they, to it's really bad i'll yeah. put um the earplugs in and then sound cancelling headphones over the top yeah that's bad <laughs> but yes necessary i totally get that i totally get that and then you put the death metal in the noise cancelling headphones blasting <laughs> over the earplugs <laughs> that's yeah, like that's level 11 <laughs> yeah right. then you don't you, you don't hear the fire in there and you know coming uh, in, in the kitchen or anything so like, yeah. um so we were talking yesterday when i was having a com this conversation and you were saying you know it'd be so nice when you're old and you start losing your hearing <laughs> right. just to take yeah. the edge off all the triggers i was like oh that'll be the day <laughs> Yeah. Is that the you know, I feel like I can hear everything. My dad always says, like, you've got ears like a bat. Because um, right. I can just, I can hear everything. And I see everything. I hear everything. And I was thinking the other day, like, you know, back in the day where um, people used to live, you know, in little communities and villages, and maybe they needed, like, a lookout person. If you had someone with misophonia in your community, you would have been fine because... They would have heard everything, seen anything, like any danger. Yeah. Like you guys could all get out of there, and you know, the, you'd be like the, you know, the, the chosen person because right. you know, everyone the hypersensitive. Would, yeah. Yeah, you'll be like the. I don't want to say, like, you know, you'd be like the the wise old like, you know, person who can hear and see everything. <laughs> I'm thinking the village lunatic, where if they see something, hear something weird, they'll be seeing me like screaming like crazy, and then that'll be your alarm. <laughs> well, the but I don't yeah. like it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a good point about when you're when you're getting old. I mean, uh, yeah, losing your hearing. I mean, who cares? Like you're you're not you're probably retired. It's not like you need to listen to your boss or anything. Um, you just need your sight so you can just sit on a beach and look at the ocean, and then oh, listen yeah. to white noise anyway. Exactly. So, <laughs> kind of all works out. It does. That's kind of like out. having earplugs ear earplugs in the speakers. It's like uh, losing your hearing with an ocean next to you. So. basically and it's like you know i think because my hearing is so feels so good anyway i mean if, even though it was to like lose it a bit if I was, when i'm older like it'd probably just be at a normal level to be honest right right, right. <laughs> so um yeah so, so and, and and so you live you're living you're not living with your with your partner your boyfriend right not yet i mean we're okay. uh moving in together in like a couple of weeks um mm. and this is actually causing me some Meets the funny issues, yeah, anxiety oh, okay. because yeah. it's a kind of old, big house. It's been separated into five flats, so mm -hmm. it already feels like a little bit claustrophobic. Everyone's sort of on top of each other, and because it's an old building, the walls and the ceilings yeah. um, are just paper thin. And on the occasions where I visited the place, um, you know, you can hear neighbours. And I'm thinking, oh, and sometimes it's really quiet, actually. Like, when it's quiet, it is silent. But then when someone's home, you know, you do hear things. And I mean, at the moment, the place doesn't have any furniture in it or anything, so there's nothing to absorb the noise. But, right. you know, that'll, make, that'll help, obviously. But uh, it's, yeah. uh, it's keeping me up at night, I'm not going to lie. Like, this, I'm not... It's sad because I feel like, you know, this is a really exciting moment yeah. that we're sort of moving in together and we're doing the place up and making it how we want it uh, it's such a great opportunity and something i've never done before and then it's like i can't get excited about it because i'm just dreading thinking is this space gonna make me ill um because obviously it's not just 
a living space it's gonna i'm gonna be there all day working five days a week um and yes yeah, so i'm gonna be there a lot and you know are these neighbors gonna make my life hell who knows have you yeah have you what are your experiences in other places uh, have you lived in other places uh outside your parents house yeah so i um i used to live in a in a flat which at the time i didn't appreciate because it was it was like a new build and it was completely soundproof and I just think... Oh, uh, yeah, like all concrete and stuff. Yeah, like really solid. Yeah. And I didn't, like, yeah. appreciate at the time how amazing that was. I mean, you shut the door and it was like the whole world just Yeah, good. yeah. Um, and I think this, um, you know, this new, new place, I'm thinking, oh, you know, I don't think this is kind of the, the space that I need to, like, feel happy like I mean I don't know I'm not in there yet I don't know how it's going to work out and you know can always move but you know my ideal house at this point I think you, you know when you drive through the countryside and maybe you look up into a hill and there's like just this like little speck of a house in the middle of the like mountain or something surrounded oh yeah by I almost nothing. get into a I almost get into a car accident because I'm like oh you know <laughs> <laughs> can't, take, can't take my eyes off it um yeah no, that is pretty ideal. I mean, that's, and that's perfect for when you're old and can't hear anything um, as well. It's just like not really going anywhere. Um, yeah, no, that's great. But you, concrete places look great. But, you know, like you, when you move in, you'll, yeah, like you said, you'll, you'll fill it up with stuff. Um, you'll also get to know kind of the routines of your neighbors and, and whatnot. So I think, um, yeah, I think, I think, you know, I think you'll adjust. It's like getting you know, that balance between not letting yeah. it dictate your life and you know rule what you do and where you live and things but also like making sure that you feel happy and safe where you're living um and i agree like you know when you get to know people it almost takes a sting out of it so i've tried to like in my head i'm sort of making a bit of a meet up on your action plan so you know getting to know my neighbors so i'm not just like oh that person next door is just like driving me crazy again. I can be like, oh, you know, so and so just got some friends over and they're having a nice time. Like, I hope they're having a nice right. time and I'll put my earplugs in. So I think it does take the sting out of it when you, you know, become friendly with whoever's, you know. Become friendly and, yeah, start to, start to, know, you know, if, if you know when friends are coming over in advance, like it's, uh, it helps to kind of prepare your mind. Uh, exactly. What sucks is like if you're coming home stressed from, um, work and then you walk into like a cacophony of sounds then you're then it's just a disaster oh yeah that is the worst like at the moment you know if i come home put the key through the door and i can already hear like you know the radio's on right. it just is the worst way to sort of like come into the house you just think, oh no <laughs> walking into this yeah then you turn around at least you're in london you go to a london pub and um hang out there for a while <laughs> And then come yeah. Um, um, what was I going to say? Um, but yeah, with my little Mesophonia action plan, I'm sort of like, you know, going to almost like type it up and like stick it on the wall. So I know that if I am sort of having a moment like to check the action plan and then, you know, I might even need to check it, but it's just knowing that it's there. So I'll have all the things that yeah. I know make me feel good, like sensory experiences that make me feel calm, like you know, having a warm bath or getting a hot water bottle or, you know, going for a nice walk outside in the, like, fresh air, um, things like that. And then I'll have, like, I'm going to get a white noise machine and I'm making some playlists that, you know, I've heard people on the show talk about making playlists and making sure, like, the songs are sort of songs that start straight away. Um, yep. There's no kind of, like, quiet intro and things like that. And also you know just also, and like having my earplugs nearby and so i know i have lots of strategies because i think there's often with misophonia there's like a pause between when you're triggered and doing something about it because you sort of there's mm -hmm. like a standoff almost like oh i'm not i'm not moving or i'm not gonna put my headphones in like they should just be quiet or they should stop doing what they're doing and it's exactly. you know it's always me yeah. who has to like change what i'm doing and then it's just kind of accepting like oh like and then b by the time you actually do some action and do something about it you're so wound up so it's exactly. just kind of you know just accepting it and being like right headphones in yeah no i mean yeah a, a lot of things that sounds like a, a, a great action plan or just kind of a list of things we all we all know help 
but like you said in the moment we just want to get that out of there or or we just kind of uh, like a deer in the headlights we just kind of like don't know what to do and we're just assuming that the rest of the world needs to just get their shit together and uh shut up <laughs> so it's good to have like a, a nice list on the fridge or wherever it is on your phone exactly you know, about, yeah interesting okay okay um and how about your um how about your brother do you, do you mean do you talk to him about a lot of this stuff like uh this is for the family misophonia action plan or is he kind of more on his own uh it's interesting because he's more like he's on even though we both share it like you know he's sort of on his own like i think mm -hmm. he has different triggers or he just deals like we're quite different people like, he deals with things in very different ways to me yeah. um so we don't talk about it too much but um but also i think you know because he's my brother i will i think oh like you know it's that expectation that he's gonna like have exactly the same experience as me and deal with things in the same way so when i find out that he doesn't that makes me kind of upset but you know yeah. it's like he has his own unique experience with it and um he um the one thing we do sort of bond over is like eating sounds at the table you know early in lockdown we were sort of there was like a thing around like we're gonna have meals all together as a family oh so um, he's living with you guys too yeah he's here too okay. and yeah. um so we sort of like you know lock eyes across you know <laughs> and be like yeah. oh god <laughs> um and then we sort of introduce a rule of like always having the radio on um and then sort of yeah gradually the <laughs> the meals are sort of like faded out just yeah. kind of a relief um yeah. but it does upset my mum she's like oh you know i wish that we could all eat together as a family i was like you know this is like this vision of, from society that like you know it's this wholesome thing to have like family meals right. and sit around the table and share food together which is like a lovely thing to do but it just doesn't work for me no so i, was like, yeah. I said like couldn't we just go for like a nice walk instead that could be our like you know alternative to a family meal but there's this you know idea that you know it's nice to sit around together but yeah some with misophonia is not so yeah why would you make sacred uh, why do people make sacred the uh as a time to talk the time when there's a bunch of stuff in your mouth that just seems odd. <laughs> get, get it over with. Then you can go talk. That's fine. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. And you guys, uh, do you guys? Uh, well, I guess yeah. You guys don't talk about it. I guess you must have holidays and stuff, right? With even more extended family, does that get even uh, that much worse? Um. Oh, well, they live kind of far away, so we don't. I don't okay, you don't have a lot of. I don't yeah. have. I mean, we. I'm very close to them, and you know. So we do have, you know, when we, you know, they, yeah, I mean, there's people that might say they've who definitely trigger me. Um, and, but because I don't see them too often, it's sort right, of great. manageable. And I, I, I know, you know, I can anticipate it and prepare mentally. Um, but yeah, Christmas, you know, I hear, I hear you talk about, about, you know, Thanksgiving and that kind of dread. So I definitely have that about Christmas dinner things like that everyone's sort of talking about oh it's so exciting to have this, like lovely meal yeah. i'm just like no <laughs> right. yeah. yeah i mean i guess it's coming up we're already in october so uh yeah something people should be well are i'm sure are thinking about um well we're uh yeah i mean so we should probably kind of uh start to uh, we've already talked for like uh, a good good 45 50 minutes or so um you know, i'm just curious like you know i know you've done a lot of research um you know you've had experiences at work and you've got uh you know action plan stuff and you listen to the podcast is there kind of anything you kind of want to want to tell people um about me so about your experiences or maybe just make the make a call out to folks in the uk <laughs> to kind of uh get together with you maybe uh, I, yeah i mean I'd, I'd love to meet more people who well like you know chat to more people who have it um because i find that is you know in the sort of moments where i felt really helpless that is the most soothing thing like where you know i've had recently like you know i tuned into an episode of the podcast when i was feeling like that and it was just like a it just felt like a bomb like it just felt you know really soothing and the thing yeah. you know it helped to really calm me down and, and remind me that it's not 
you know, it's not my fault. It's not your fault. It is what yeah. it is. And, you know, and you're not alone. Yeah, I'm not alone. And, you know, it's, it is ultimately like just looking after yourself really carefully. Um, you know, I, I, hope, I have to sort of, I'm really aware of what I eat eat like not eating anything like too you know uh how much i sleep like not drinking too much alcohol like things that can kind of overstimulate my system anyway um yeah trying to live kind of like a healthy life so i can sort of stay balanced and, and manage those those triggers better even though it's not always easy but um and um what else yeah i just think accepting it really yeah. which can feel hard sometimes but um you know i i i think if if someone was to say would you take away like okay a, a genie came along i was like right i'll give you a wish like it just say the word and i will get rid of your misophonia i'd probably say no yeah that's an interesting question i can understand saying no but i would i i think i would say yes I would, knowing though that I would be a different person, but uh, well, that's the thing for me because I feel like it would make me a different person. And I, I, think, I think I'm awesome. Uh, <laughs> and, and, you, know, you, you, I know you are awesome too. So yeah, that would be the one thing. But I think I think there are many possibilities of awesomeness for people with misophonia. I wouldn't mind just like I would say, well, maybe could you just tone the triggers down, like you know, reduce uh, the, yeah. you know, make it less impactful and less painful to hear them but you know maybe um but i wouldn't want to lose the kind of the synesthesia like being able to see mm -hmm. the colors or like you know feeling having all those sensitivities like i think the world really needs people who can like feel things who are self-aware who can see things that others can't and um you know i wouldn't want to sort of get rid of that that ability that you know allows me to do that really i think it's i keep thinking or well, maybe it's like a gift maybe i don't know <laughs> has it kind helped of... you in yeah i mean has it helped you in in any kind of situations that that ability to um i don't know see see colors like uh, creatively or in some other do you feel like it's helped you in your in your work in in publishing definitely like, uh, um, i mean yeah. my thing is writing yeah. um and i think it it impacts the way that I string words together. Um, I write a lot of poems. Um, you know, I've always, you know, music is such a joy for me, like, you know, making music. Um, definitely, and it also do you have impacts- this stuff, do, you, do you have this stuff posted anywhere, like your poetry or your music or anything, or? Not really, or no? like it's okay. not, it's, it's, I keep it very private, but, um, yeah. and I, you know, the music was more something I, I used to do when I was, um sort of in my early 20s like throughout school things like that so but i just remember it you know the it my brain really liked <laughs> music you know reading music making music it, you know really like a, it was a real pleasure for me um but yeah i get it through now like through the way that i can like string words together and um it also it kind of um changes the way that i feel about people like if someone's name has a particular like color combination like, like that will kind of reflect on how I, ah. how I feel about them and stuff but anyway I sort of digress um, no 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 I mean this is, this is interesting um, I would just say I, like I, I, you know yeah. stay you know stay really positive about it and embrace it and it's part of you and like you know just uh you know make a little action plan yeah that's a great that's a great I don't I don't know if anyone I haven't heard anyone um put it put it that way like an action plan which is basically a list of uh kind of having a list of go-to's like your your top kind of um coping mechanisms always there right in front of you so you don't have to think about it um, yeah i mean i like to think i'm quite a positive person so i try not to sort of um you get to you know stop it from let it stop it let it I can't talk it's so, it's so early in the morning I'm like my yeah. brain's like closing down now but yeah just um I try not to let it stop me from doing things and living the life that I want to basically well that's great uh, it's, uh many positive notes there um maybe we should you know, we should end it on that um mm -hmm. 
yeah, a lot, a lot of great, a lot of great tips there. And um, yeah, I'm glad you were able to talk about this more. And and, and it's good, it's good to have you uh, find more people in in the UK. It, it seemed like from the people I was talking to in the past, uh, there weren't, there wasn't a lot of awareness. So it's good to see somebody who's actually trying to uh, do the research and, uh, and 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 reach more people. So um, yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. So, yeah. Thanks Thank for coming you. on, Claire. Well, it's been a real pleasure. Um, to share all this stuff, I feel like you know probably could do another hour of like talking about it. I feel like it's just the stuff. I was, yeah, I was I was thinking about that when you said uh, um, maybe an, uh, a year after you move in to your uh, to your place, we'll do like a little uh, retrospective and see how see how the new yeah, uh, flat I love is that out for you. Definitely, I'll let you know how the um, yeah. the action plan's holding up. I might have like yes. ripped it up by that. <laughs> Right. <laughs> well, no, I hope not. <laughs> no, I think you'll just add to it. I mean, you're, you're, I think yeah. you're quite a good, at, good at research and thinking of new ideas. So I'm sure you'll just add to it and it'll all work out. So exactly. Yeah. Um, it will work out. It'll be fine. Great. She says. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks again, Claire. Thank you. It was a pleasure talking. Thank you, Claire. Another great conversation. If you're enjoying the shows, please consider hitting the five stars on Apple podcasts. Otherwise, hit me up on Instagram or Facebook, Misophonia Podcast, or Twitter, Misophonia Show. If you are on Instagram and want to be in that Misophonia Podcast group chat, just DM me. Music, as always, is by Moby. And until next week, wishing you peace and quiet.